Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today for our first webinar of the year in 2021, how to implement secure electronic signatures to increase productivity for your distributed workforce. My name is Nicole Schmeide and I'm the marketing specialist here at DocuWare and I'll be moderating today's session. The webinar will be, will be presented by David Reinhardt, Regional Sales Director here at DocuWare. And I wanna let you know that the webinar is being recorded and no later than tomorrow morning, I'll email you a copy of the recording slides and handouts that you can actually download now in your GoToWebinar panel. There is a digital transformation ebook, a e-signatures flyer and a platform brochure that you can take back and review with your team. So as you can see on the right for the schedule for today, the first few minutes, Dave will cover, you know, give you the full scoop on electronic signatures. You'll get, you know, the A to Z um, overview of them. And then the next 20 minutes, he'll dive into the uh, live demo so you can see them in action. And then at the end, we'll open it up for some Q&A. Thanks again for joining us. And now I'll pass it back to David. All right, thank you all for your time today. Uh, I, today we're going to be talking about some some fairly important topics. You know, the uh, 2020 had uh, presented a lot of changes for a lot of people with COVID and people being forced to work remotely and literally shoved into the deep end of technology and trying to figure out, you know, how to make your business work, how to operate, how to keep people on task, and do how to do a lot of things. And there's a lot of tools that we have available, and you know, our past webinars and future webinars, we continue to expound upon what we can do. But today we want to focus on electronic signatures. You know, DocuWare has been, been around for quite some time, and you know, our main focus is helping people to, to keep working, right? In the office, out of the office, around the country, from home, Starbucks, if you can get to a Starbucks, and really literally anywhere on the planet, um, except and including hopefully in the near future space, right? Wouldn't that be great? Um, so, but there's a lot that we can do there. And, and we can allow you to leverage your technology and operate your business processes from anywhere on any device, whether it's a mobile device, an iPhone, an Android, a tablet, a laptop, a computer, like I said, in the office, out of the office, our cloud technology, right? Cloud infrastructure has, provides a lot of functionality, a lot of scalability, um, and the ability to really grow infinitely and access your documents from anywhere, whether it's you as an employee or you're you know, uh, giving access to your contractors or, um, or customers, what have you. So, but as we focus on electronic signatures specifically in that technology, I want you to be thinking about some, some, some things, right? Some topics. Are you currently doing this now, right? How are you currently signing those documents? Are you doing it on paper still? Are you doing this electronically? Um, you know, what kind of process do you have in play? What departments are involved? What's the overall impact to the company, right? Is it one or two people? Does this happen once in a blue moon? Does it happen every single day? You know, have you ever had a recent occurrence where you just, you know, you needed to get a document signed and you just couldn't, or you needed to get signed within a certain window and you just couldn't get it done to meet those goals and there was an impact, right? And what happened from there? And, 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 and just try to focus on that and, uh, and the potential solutions that are out there because I'm sure you've been looking, as most people have, on how do you fix this big problem um, but that's, that's, there's some things to think about, right? Um, and so, you know, we want to hear from you. First, we're going to start off with a brief survey, right? Or just a, a quick question that we want to get some answers to. So we're going to go ahead and throw that out there. All right. I'm loading the poll now. You'll see it pop up on your screen. Let's take a second to select one of the choices. And once we have a good amount of votes, then I will close the poll and share the results. So it looks like you guys are voting, that's great, thank you. All right, we're almost there. Just take a second now. All right, so it looks like we got a good amount. I'm gonna close the poll now and share the results. Yep, yeah, and so, and so that's, yeah, so that's great. So it's exactly what we expected to see. Um, you know, there's a lot of you that are that are operating, you know, as usual, still signing the way you used to sign, still, you know, sending documents back and forth. But a lot of you also have gotten into some of the electronic signature technology that's out there. You know, one of the main ones that there people are using is DocuSign, Validate ID. Luckily, those are our two main partners for signature, so it's great for us. But, you know, the main thing to focus on is that many of you are already getting into this type of technology and have some familiarity with it. Um, and But others still may not be super familiar with how the technology works and uh, and what you do. And so we want to start off with a little bit of, you know, let's go back to the basics and focus on what is an electronic signature, 
right? So an electronic signature was established by the E-Sign Act, which defined an electronic signature as an image, right, or a symbol that is associated with a document. In this case, it mentions a contract, but it's not just limited to contracts. It's any document that you need to sign. The important thing is it's an image that's attached to that document um, that cannot be removed. And most importantly, and, right, and this should be in bold, um, under, uh, uh, underlined, uh, and should be in, uh, in quotes, right? Intent is the biggest thing. The intent to sign the document is huge, especially when you look at legal compliance. And that's the next thing that we're gonna be looking at here, right? So when you wanna get a document signed, it's an image that we're gonna associate with the document, it's locked in and there was an intent to sign and that makes it legally enforceable. We'll walk through the options there. So when you look at electronic signatures, there are many, many types of electronic signatures that are out there um, and it's important from a compliance perspective, but the two main ones we're gonna focus on are simple and qualified. So when you think of simple, Think of kind of like when I sign a document with Adobe Reader, right? I capture an image of my signature, I pull up a PDF document, I can apply a stamp to that document, and it's very, very, very basic, right? It's just a document with an image on it, which is really no different than a piece of paper that I signed when you look at the two side by side, right? But when you think about that compared to qualified, what's the difference, right? With qualified, this is legally binding there's verification, there's additional security. I could send you a, require to send you a code, right, on your phone. So in order to access that document, you're gonna have to put in a code. You're gonna have to answer some knowledge-based authentication questions. You may have to uh, have some additional security measures to prove that you are who you are. And that's the main difference. So with Simple, we're primarily looking at highlighting technology that is native to Docuer, right? If you didn't already know, if you're not already using Docuer, Docuer has the ability to sign through signature stamps, just like you would with Adobe, like I mentioned before. You can also sign through electronic forms, and this can be internal, external, what have you. But we have some basic features built into the technology. For those cases, the use cases, because it's not every document, but for the use cases where you need more legally binding ver verification, then we're going to look to our signature service providers in Validated ID and DocuSign. And there are many signature service providers that are out there. Do These are the two main ones that we're working with because of the overall function that they provide. And when you look at these solutions in DocuWare, Validated ID, and DocuSign all together, we provide a very robust and flexible suite of solutions surrounding electronic signature processes. And that, that's really kind of the goal, to give you access to that. Now, from a compliance standpoint, so this is really, really important to, to most people, or to many people. So the UETA and the eSign Act established a few things that, um, that validate the compliance of an electronically signed document. So the first two things deal with consent and intent. So you have to consent that by signing this document electronically, I am, I am agreeing to do business by signing this document. Usually you'll see it in the form of a checkbox or an, an acknowledgement statement that you'll pop up, uh, that'll pop up and you'll just have to say, yes, I agree to that, right? Uh, they also have to have established intent to sign, right? I'm not only saying I consent to do business electronically, but I also agree that I am me, that this document was sent to me, it's for me to sign, and I'm agreeing to sign this document. So those things are really, really important, right? The next two areas deal with the image of the document, the image being associated with the document, and integrity. So the signature has to be locked in on that document, right? I can't be signing one form and have a document you know, automatically get signed by that, right? I need to be signing that actual document. It's really important. And then the data integrity is even more important than that, right? The document cannot be changed. Once I sign that document electronically, regardless of how I sign it electronically, and to be clear, all of the different options that we have, whether you're using DocuWare, Valid ID, or DocuSign, all three have the same result with the data, with regards to the data integrity and the uh, and the associating the signature with the record. Once I sign it, that document is locked. I can't modify it. I can't do anything with it. And this is really important. You know, it's just like if you had a piece of paper that was signed. If I slid a contract across the table to you and said, "Here, go ahead and sign this contract," and then after you signed it, you hand it back to me, and I started marking it up. Well, that's not okay. And this is the same thing. So that's really important. The last piece is access. So as part of the process. Right. In order to be um, legally compliant, the person signing it has to have a copy of the fully executed document. Right. Whether it's an email, however you want to give them access, they need to have access to the fully, fully executed document. And the person that has requested the document being signed, they need to have an access to the exact same document as well. And our solution supports both of those. So those are the key things. And there's more. We could spend hours talking about this, but those are the high points talking about legal compliance here. So now. Getting into the solutions a little bit before we get into the demo, just kind of talking through how it works and uh, and what's available. 
and the different options. So we're just going to do a sneak peek, right? So when you look at some screenshots of the solution in action, so with DocuWare, right, you can do signatures internally or externally, right? I can send an email and you're going to get a link to a document that needs to be signed. You can sign it through a form, you can sign it through a stamp, especially internally, you can have an approval workflow. It's really straightforward, right? Automatically send a document to get approved. When I say approve, I can also attach my signature. And when I attach my signature, it's going to have my user ID, the date and time that I signed it. So I've got that audit trail. And then once again, the document's locked when I'm done. But the point is, it's built into the solution. It's super easy. It's super flexible. Um, and and, and it's, it's very robust from that perspective. When you start looking at qualified signatures and getting into the signature search providers inside of Valid ID and DocuSign, they have there's overlapping functionality in them, but they're both designed to be fairly robust and easy, right? If it's not easy, people aren't gonna use it. So that's a key focus, right? So with Valid ID, there is pre-authentication that is involved, right? And we can do it with any of the solutions, right? So even with DocuWare, I can have where they're required to put in a password. That's part of the process as well. So with Valid ID, I can have them authenticated with a, with a unique identifier that is a Valid ID. If I send somebody a document to, that, to be signed, I can have them enter in, required to enter in the SMS code that I'm going to send them, right? I'll send them a code through their text message. They're going to get that code. Without that code, they cannot, cannot, cannot sign that document. So that's super important. Validate ID also has an additional option called biometric mode. So with biometric mode, I can have a document sent to a device. Usually it's going to be an iPad or some kind of a tablet just for, for size and conformity but I can have a, a, a documents that need to be signed sent to that device. It's only gonna be sent to a very specific device, right? And then that device will allow people to sign it. it could be something where you're using in a kiosk mode where in order to get into a certain area, they're gonna sign a document. Or if you're onboarding employees or signing contracts, you're gonna sign on this one signature device or delivery tickets. There's lots of applications, but the point is I can make this really easy. So instead of handing do handling documents and handing documents to people that get signed, it's all done through an electronic device it's super secure, everything's encrypted, and it's very simple, right? When you look at DocuSign, it's a little bit different, but we're still talking about the same concept. The big differences are gonna be, we've got more authentication options. I can not only do the SMS code, I can do an access code. I can have a phone call. I can do knowledge-based authentications, and they're constantly adding more options from there, right? With both, with all of these options, we're still talking about sending uh, external emails. So if I need to get a document signed by an, uh, by an external party, right? whether it's a new hire or a customer or a vendor, whomever, I'm gonna send them an email. So it's all gonna go through email. They're gonna get a link to the document they need to be signed. They have got to authenticate as part of the process if I want them to, usually I do. And then they also have the ability to put in either a pseudo signature or an initial on the document, which is really powerful, right? But all these solutions offer flexibility is kind of the key. Now, how does this work? So it works using what is called a signature service. So for the customers, for those of you who already are using DocuSign, Validity, and other technology like that, that solution probably works really well for you right now, right? It's easy to upload a document. It's easy to get it signed. Um, that's a very simple process. So what DocuWare does that adds on to that is we automate the workflows. So right now, many of you are manually uploading documents to get signed, and you're manually choosing who you want to have them sign, and you're manually choosing all the follow-up steps, and then when it's done, you have to go get that document and then store it somewhere that you're going to have access to, whether it's on a folder structure, you know, on Windows, whether it's in you know, Google Drive. Um, but if it needs to go into a document management solution for workflows and auditing and other processes, then you want to make sure that that's that we've got a holistic approach where all my documents are stored there. And so that's one of the things that we do with DocuWare. We automate the whole process. We make sure everything is centrally stored. So we're gonna initiate the signature for you. We're gonna make sure that all of the reminders and escalations and all of that happens. We're gonna make sure it gets sent to all the right people to get sent in the right order. And when it's done, you know, we have notifications that are sent off, right? You get your pop-ups, all of those things. And the document is automatically stored in DocuWare so it's easy to access. And most importantly, everybody knows about it instantaneously. So there is no delay. There's no, hey, did you get the email? Did you see it? You know, following up to make sure you signed it, what have you. That doesn't happen because we take care of that for you. So it's super powerful. Now, let's take a let's 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 take a break and actually look at the Docker system, see some of this in action. So I'm going to go over a brief overview of the Docker technology for those of you who haven't seen it before. So this is Docker. Docker is a cloud-based document management system. Okay. We're stored in Azure. Uh, we've got all sorts of compliances. We've got uh, lots of redundancy. Your data is backed up multiple times, you know, uh, to make sure that it, you're fully covered. 
Um, and we'll, of course, we'll also take care of the uh, the updates for you and, and all of the day-to-day -day maintenance. So you guys don't have to worry about managing this data yourself or securing the data because we'll take care of it for you as part of our process, right? It's part of the benefits of working with us. Now, with this system, we do also support you know, authentication because it's super important. We'll do Active Directory authentication. We have local Docker accounts for employees, contractors, vendors, customers, you know, you name it. But you know, authentication and security is really important. So we can choose who can see what, right? What you have access to, a full audit trail. I'm actually logged in with multiple browsers here so I can show you the view from different users. So here I'm logged on as the admin. And then in this case, I'm logged in as Peggy. I don't sound like Peggy, but I'm Peggy in this case when I change to this, this user. And then I've also got my friend Peter King over here that's got some roles uh, in this overall process. So you have lots of, lots of uh, benefits there from a, from a security um, and an audit perspective. Now with the DocuWare solution, right, it's fairly simply set up. We wanna focus on ease of use on top of flexibility. So we have document trays, which is where most documents come in. We've got lots of options for capturing information, but we can capture not only your documents, we can make it really easy, but we can also automatically capture a key piece of information out of your documents at the same time. So when you're routing them for approvals, right, there's no guesswork on uh, what's in the document, what's it pertaining to. People don't have to necessarily open the files to view them and see what's going on. It's going to happen. You're going to see all that data real time inside of our workflow steps, right? We believe that this should all be very simple. When I'm searching for a document, it shouldn't be a complex thing. I shouldn't have to drill through folders. I should be able to just go in and click search, right? I should be able to choose the key piece of data. What's the first name? What's the last name? What type of document? Right, et cetera. Or if I just want to see everything, I should be able to hit search and just see everything. If I want to access a document, I should be able to do something as simple as double click and I can see a document. It should be simple and we make it so. On top of that, we also look at how do we save you time? How do we give you time back in your day and increase your efficiency with your processes? And so in that, we have two main areas we looked at. One is going to be in lists where we have basically a dashboard for all of your documents. So you can see real time as documents come and go right? Do I have a new invoice that needs to be taken care of? Do I Have I already paid all my invoices? Do I have a new person that's being onboarded? Where are they on the process? And all of these things so you can visually see what's going on in your world to save you time. So rather than you looking for data, it's going to come to you, right? We want this to be easy. You can also assign specific workflow tasks, right? So if I need to assign a task to a person to get it completed, then I can give them a very specific workflow task and then they're required to perform that and also within a specific period of time, right? So I can take care of those reminders, the escalations to remove the bottlenecks for you. So now getting into our specific process here. So when we look at signatures and how do we show how that functions inside of Docker, we've got a fairly straightforward process here centered around HR and onboarding. So some of you may be familiar and some of you may not. So we have what are called pre-configured solutions at Docker that are designed to have, have basically, it's a pre-configured solution for HR, right? We've got other departments as well, but HR is one of the big ones where it handles the complex tasks centered around onboarding, right? Onboarding candidates and looking at how do you, you know, how do you bring on a candidate? How do you make that successful? How do you make it cost effective and reduce my operating costs by making sure I'm getting all the information that I need to get? And so this specific, uh, in this specific instance, what we're doing is we're gonna leverage the um, the uh, the uh, pre-configured solution for employee management, and we're, we're only going to focus on the parts that deal with electronic signatures. And we're going to highlight how each of these systems work in DocuWare, right, in Validate ID, and in DocuSign. So what we've got is we've got the process starting with a um, with a new hire requisition, right? So we've got one of our managers, right? His name is Peter King. So I switched over. I'm now logged on as Peter. Peter needs to requisition a new hire, right? And the way they do that is through an electronic form. So the electronic form is right here. I've, taken, I've already gone through and filled it out. It's not very difficult, but I went ahead and filled it out for us just to save us time. So I've got a job title here. Or I've got a location, my department. And of course, I've got multiple options that are in here. I can put in all my information and I'm gonna fill it out. And to start the process, I literally just hit submit. Now, once I hit submit, it's got internal process that goes through. We've got workflows that are pre-configured. I need to get, make sure that I have this approval to bring on this new hire, right? It's very, very important. And so from there, what happens is it automatically goes to uh, my friend Peggy Jenkins, who's in our HR department, right? And she's going to get a task that says, oh, look, I've got a new hire requisition, and I can see where it came from. I can see all the pertinent um, features of that, doc, of, of that process. I can view the document here that I literally just submitted. I've also got some fields that it's pre-populated. So it says, hey, my friend Peter King went ahead and submitted this. What's the department, the title, the location? Now, you'll also notice I've got a human a human resources approval uh, uh, area on my document where I need to sign. So I'm going to have to approve this, right, assuming I approve it, but I also need to sign it, 
And this is one of our simple ways that we can sign a document. So with this, I've got a signature, right? An image of a signature I uploaded. It's part of a signature stamp that's native to DocuWare, right? In order to use this, uh, I can choose this option. In this case, for the sake of time, right? I didn't require a, a password, but I can require a password for this. I did in this case. So I choose my signature. This is actually Peggy Jenkins' signature. If, we, if any of you know Peggy Jenkins, I went and got her signature from her just for you guys today. I choose where I want to place it. It's got the information of that user. Only that user has access to the signature. Super important. So that user is now applying the signature. I've got a date and timestamp, right? And now once I do that, that document is now locked. I can no longer change it. I can't do anything to it. And I also can't remove this signature. Super important, right? We talked about this a minute ago. So now once I'm done signing it, I just hit confirm and that continues on with that part of the workflow. So it just showed you one basic way where I can easily sign a document, right? From there, that is then going to initiate a workflow that goes back to my friend Peter King. We've got some things happening behind the scenes. Like one of the things that is happening is I realize that I need to now provision, um, provision some technology for my new hire, right? I'm gonna bring them on, they've gotta have a laptop, they've gotta have a cell phone. If they've got an office, we need chairs and all sorts of other things like that. And so I wanna make sure that I get that provision correctly. So what I'm gonna do is since I've got this and I can see that my friend Peggy Jenkins approved it, I've got my stamp, all these great things, but now I need to provision, right, some, some technology. So where I do that is through this provisioning form. So I literally click on this link, which is gonna take me to a form also in Docuer, where I can provision technology. Okay, and I've already once again gone through the trouble of filling this out. So I've got my new employee, uh, their information in here. We've got several fields. Right? I've got HR fields. I've got some FM fields to fill out in case they need an office space or what have you. In this case, since they're working from home, really all they need is some technology. They need access to CRM, to email, to DocuWare, of course, right? Because everybody needs access to DocuWare. They've got to have a cell phone and a laptop, just the basics, right? And then once I submit this, I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, I completed all my form, all my fields and I hit submit. Now, in this case, we're actually using a third-party IT provider for all of our technology. So they, they spin up the laptops, they provide the cell phones, they do all these great things, and they happen to be using valid ID for their process, right? And so with that, they're, they're in an offsite location where all this technology is, and they're, they're waiting for these requests, and so they receive them on an iPad that has an application called VidSigner on it. A VidSigner is a valid ID app. So when I talked about um, the biometric mode, Right, and how that works, that's this in action. So this is this is an iPad that I'm using here right in front of me, it's happening live. And so if I tap the screen, it's gonna show me all the available documents. If I have one document, only one document available, it'll show up for me to preview. If I have multiple documents to preview, then it'll show me them here in order and I can click on each one individually and I can see that document, I just click on sign. And it's gonna allow me to see the document, I can preview it, right? I can scroll up and down, I can view the entire page, I can make sure that my data is correct, right? I don't have to sign it right now. I can sign it whenever I'm ready. And the point of this is I wanna have the person who's provisioning all this technology, they're signing off on it. Yes, I've provided it, it's gonna be in the mail and I'm signing off on it so you have proof of that. But the other benefit of this is as I sign this, is this provides an instantaneous notification, right? They receive the notification that I need some stuff from them and I'm giving it back to them saying it's complete, I'm signing it, right? And then we're done. And this allows the person who has then fulfilled this to see a copy as well. And once again, it all happens through these workflows. Now from here, where does it go? It goes right back into DocuWare. So that if I wanted to see any of these documents, they all show up inside these, these employee files, right? All inside of DocuWare. I have my original new hire request, right? That I see here with my friend Peggy Jenkins signature on it. I've also got my provisioning request that I'm gonna see and I could scroll down and view all of this. And I can even see in the IT section, that it's been signed through validated ID. The signature is a little bit small because they've got a lot of more some of things. You can always play with the size on it, right? But the point is, it's done, it's simple, it's a cohesive workflow. I didn't have to go somewhere else to get my documents. It's really easy and very secure. Now, the last step in the process, right? So we've requested a new hire, we've got some stuff for them, but the new hire is not ready yet. They've got to fill out some documents. And so where did those go? What happened there? Well, it was an automated workflow that happened. So I've actually logged on, I've got my new hire, right? and he's monitoring his email, waiting for stuff to happen as he's ready to start, he's ready to get going and sell some document, right? Which is great, we want that. And so he's got an email here that says, oh look, it's an automated document notification. I've got some new member onboarding files. Oh great, so I've got this customized email and where are my onboarding forms? They're right here. So I go through here, click on the form and I can go to fill these out. Pretty straightforward, so I'm just gonna put in some basic information here. 
and you can choose you know what you want to have them fill out you can choose what fields are required what fields are not you know i can do validations so you know if i want to have them you know not be able to say they were born yesterday or that their social security number was only one right i can do all those things uh, and so i have options there let's see here Let me put in some more detailed information and i can choose what i want versus what i don't want right and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there at that point. Now, when we also look at signatures, I could have a workflow that's in Docker only and have them sign through an a signature process right here, right? And they sign the name, exactly. It depends on you know how good you are with signing on touchpads. I like to do this on my phone or my tablet, but you can sign inside the solution. Now, you can also, in this case, we're gonna route this to DocuSign, right? I wanna have a little bit different experience, a little more security, right? And also from a flexibility, ease of use. So I don't have to worry about, you know, how people do this. They can do it on any device they want. We're going to make this easy. So now I sent that through DocuSign. So what happens next? Once again, automated process. So they're going to get a notification that says, hey, look, I need you to sign my W-4. I need you to sign an I-9. And here they just came in right there. So if I want to sign that I-9, I click on the link. I've got a nice friendly DocuSign email. I want to preview my document here. It loads me right into the DocuSign interface. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. You can see my form has already started to be filled out, which is you know, something, if you're familiar with DocuWare, that's something we have natively, works really, really well. And then from there, I can just choose how to want to sign this. So I could draw my signature like I did with the other solutions, or DocuSign offers a pseudo solution, which I've already selected. And so this isn't my signature, but it looks close enough, right? And it's also got the information in there that's actually showing, right, that this is me that I signed it. Now I chose in this workflow not to require authentication because I wanted to make this simple and for the sake of time, since we want to we want to get through and show you as much technology as possible. But I can at this point require, you know, a PIN, like I said, uh, you know, a passcode, knowledge-based authentication. The validation is really important. I've already gone through that. I'm me. This is my document, so we're good there. So I'm signing as me. I can also initial if I want to, and I can put a date signed if I want to as well. I've also got other options for checking boxes. You know, if I want to check a box, I can say yes. You know, yes, I am a, a citizen, et cetera. And so I can choose to check my box here, et cetera. And it's pretty straightforward. And so now, once I'm done, I hit finish, and here we are. And it's going to say, "Hey, you, you want to sign up for DocuSign? I'm good for now. I'll do that later." So now I finished that process. Where did it go? What happened next? Well, first, remember we talked about the uh, getting access to the document? Well, I've already got the completed documents right here. It's sent me a confirmation in my email already. So as the person who signed, I've got a copy of it. Sweet, exactly what I needed. Now, internally inside of Docuware, I've got the exact same thing. So if I look for my documents, because I had a sign, sign my I-9, my I-9 that I filled out is going to be signed. It takes a second to get updated. And look at that, here it is. There is my completed, DocuSign document. Notice I didn't have to go to DocuSign to get it or anywhere else. It came to me. It's part of my process. And once again, once I'm done with this process, notifications go out, people where the workflows are complete, all documents are signed, we're ready to move on, fireworks go off, right? People are excited and let's let's get ready, let's get back to it. And so that's the main goal with this is we want to take the technology that you have that works really well. And if you don't have access to it, we can help provide it for you. But let's set up a cohesive automated streamlined workflow to let you focus on getting your getting back to business and getting things done in a timely manner whether you're in the office or out of the office it shouldn't matter this should be easy and we can make it so right so that's that's kind of the key now i know we kind of went through that pretty quick if anybody has any questions on this you know if you want to see a demo one-on-one -on -one, i recommend you know contact docuver contact your representative and we can go through and do a deeper dive. Now, we only focused on HR processes for that one point, right? But there's a lot of other use cases, use cases that are out there. So sales, think about it. contracts. You know, I'm in the process of selling a house and buying a house. Guess what? Most of that is done electronically through electronic signatures. You know, it's a very, very common thing these days um, in any kind of sales you know, area. Marketing, HR, we talked about that. You know, finance, legal applications, any document you're currently signing physically in most cases can be signed electronically with some specific cases where there are reasons why you can't, right? But most of them you can sign electronically and totally legally compliant. But this, as you already know, or as we talked about, DocuWare scales into any area of the organization, any department, any process, there is a way that we can help, right? And we would love to have the opportunity to show you how. So um, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, to talk to you, to educate you on e-signatures a little bit, to show you how the technology works. At this point, I'm going to hand it back over to uh, to the amazing Nicole so she can go through and answer some some questions for you. So thank you very much, Nicole. All right. Yeah, thanks, David. Thanks for taking us through that, you know, complete overview of electronic signatures, you know, the compliance, 
behind that and the legalities walking us through the demo. So what you what you saw today, you know, was a you know introductory demo to give you you know a good uh, preview of you know using this Docker signature service. If you would like to see more features and continue the conversation, you can uh, request a personalized demo. Docker.com slash demo. Email us anytime. You know, email us right after the webinar or tomorrow. Uh, next week, you know, email us at contact.us at docker.com. Or if you're already working with an authorized Docker partner, definitely reach out to them to get started. So uh, also I want to remind everyone uh, the recording, the slides and the handouts will be emailed to you no later than tomorrow morning. So let's jump into the questions. The first one is, can the same form be sent to multiple email addresses? Yes, so I can have a document sent to as many email addresses as you would like to get signed. Um, you know, how that works depends on the solution that you're using, whether it's through um, DocuWare or ID or DocuSign, but there are ways you can set up to where you can either have a signature by multiple people or you can have a person signed multiple times. We have options for all of those use cases, absolutely. Cool. Um, that signature from validated ID, is that a stamp or a certificate file? Um, so they do actually have a certificate that's embedded into that document. It's an image of, of the signature on it, but yes, it does have a certificate. Um, it is secure. Cool. Next question. Is there a size limitation on the documents? For example, um, if the, you know, the contracts are 39 plus pages long? Uh, no, it doesn't matter how long how, how long or large the documents are. Um, so now the only challenge you would get into is if I was going to, uh, well, no, even then it wouldn't matter. If I'm not emailing the document back forth, I'm emailing a link to a document that is hosted in another system. So the size doesn't matter. There's no email restrictions or limitations there. So. Okay. Um, next question is, can you use the validated ID um, in DocuWare without the workflow manager? Um, no, so it's a great question. It does require workflow. So the way it works without getting too deep into the weeds is it uses what's called a web service. So essentially, you know, the current process for just using either Validate ID or DocuSign without DocuWare is to log into the web, into that website and send documents to it and choose where it's going to go. So part of the benefit we provide by doing it for you is we do that work. The way we do the work is we do a web service call. So DocuWare through our workflow engine is going to automatically call Validate ID or DocuSign or any of these signature service providers and say, hey, I've got a document that so-and-so is trying to send to you. Um, instead of them sending it, I'm going to send it on their behalf. Right, just like you would use a third party to do work for you that you don't want to do yourself. So we're going to send it to them. We're going to send all the particulars, all the parameters, who's going to get, you know, what the information for the person who's going to get it signed, what authentication you're requiring. We're doing that handshake for you, and then we'll get the document signed. It then transitions into that service to sign it for you, just like you would normally expect to see on that end. And then when it's done, rather than you having to go get it, it's going to send the document right back to DocuWare to close the loop, and then we'll store it in DocuWare and, and send you notifications. So the way that works is going to require the workflow. Uh, the workflow engine. Got it. So next question, can providing a signature act as a workflow action? For example, signing a document would equal approve? Um, you're still going to have to hit, you know, you're still going to have to hit the approve button, right? So the signing of the document is going to, um, is going to lock in the signature on the document, but inside of DocuWare to do the workflow, you're still gonna to wanna to have them perform additional steps, right? You're still gonna to wanna to have them hit approve, validate some data, things like that. Um, so yeah, that's still a, an important part of the process. And there's a lot of reasons why, uh, but a lot of times from, from, a, um, from an efficiency sake, we're gonna to wanna to save some additional steps beyond um, and provide validation beyond just the signature itself. So yeah. Got it, all right. Um, we do have more questions, so you know we we were scheduled to um, 2:45 Eastern. Um, just want to remind anyone that if you need to head out, you know, again, jot down the email address and look out for my email tomorrow morning. So, next question: Does the validate ID with an iPad authenticate the signer without an email address? So the way it works with iPad is the um, the iPad was already registered in advance. So I went through that registration process to then validate who I am because it's my it's my device. So it sends specifically to me. So that's how the validation actually happens, All right? So then having to require a code in order to get into that device, I had to use my device, which was already pre-registered. 
So it's, it's operating the same way. It's just like if I sent it to your email and I gave you a pin, right? That pin is gonna come in on your device. We're saving a couple steps and just sending it straight to that device that is only supposed to be used you know, by you. Can you send one document to multiple people and designate specific fields for specific people to fill out? Yes, yes you can. So I know that's a common request that we get. So inside of the inside of the workflow process, you can identify, you can either leave it open and let them sign where they would like, or you can identify specific areas on the documents that need to be signed. And you can get specific to say that this person signs on page one in this place, somebody else signs on page three in a different place, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get very granular. It's up to you on how you want to configure that. And the, it's all done through the workflow engine. So you don't have to specify after the fact. It's all designed to be automatically uh, set up. Okay. And do links expire when they're sent out? Um, so once it's complete and the document has been signed, those links do expire. Okay. Um, let's see. Can you assign proxy signers? Um, that is a good question. We don't normally have that request because usually you're going to send it to a specific individual. I think in the case of a proxy, you would have to identify in advance who that proxy would be, which accomplishes the same thing, right? You're still sending it to a person. So what we're doing in each of these cases is we have, we're using an email address of a specific person to send that to, and then that's going to be identified by whoever the signer is. So if it would be a proxy, you'd have to identify that proxy in advance. Um, and there's ways to make that more dynamic, but essentially it's still going to send a, you have to specify an email address and send it to a specific individual. So you need their, their name, their address, and their, uh, if you need to send them SMS, then you'd need their, their uh, phone number um, as well for that part of the process. Okay. Great question. Yes, cool, thanks. Um, can you make the signature stamp mandatory before you confirm slash approve, hit approve? I think you said that it is, right? Like you have to. Yeah, you have to you, you have to sign the document as part of the process. So, I mean, I guess, depending on how you want your workflow, right? So if somebody is gonna approve a document and they need to get signed, so technically you can approve inside of Docuer and it'll send a document to get signed. But if your part of the workflow requires you to sign it first and then approve it, then you can do it. It's just a matter of flipping those steps around. So the nice thing with the workflow engine inside of Docuware is you can configure your workflow any way you would like, right? So once again, if you want it signed by a bunch of people, you can do that. If you want to sign in a specific order, that's pre-configured. You can choose where you want people to sign, and you can choose how you want them to sign and in what order. And you can have it built into where it won't let you sign, it won't let you move on from that step until you've completed all the steps in your requirements. So there's a lot of flexibility that's in there for that process. Gotcha. All right. Um, let's see. Sounds like someone is, they said they're configuring um, with validated D ID a document that contains multiple signatures. Is there a way I can preview the location of each one within the document in um, such as what is similar to what is done with a centralized signature? Um, so I guess they want to be able to preview where signatures will be placed uh, if there's multiple signatures. I think that kind of was asked earlier, right? Be yeah, you can to... choose You can choose where the signatures will be placed on the document. That's really something that is set up by the person who is configuring the workflow. So the people submitting aren't, generally speaking, going to see the document and they're not going to preview it before they send it. The goal is we want to save time, right? So if every time I want to send a document, I have to go through and preview it and approve where the document will be signed. Those are steps that really don't need to be taken, right? So if it's a standard process, you do again and again. If I need to sign a document to get signed or a contract to get signed, I know where it needs to be signed. So really it's up to the person building out the workflow to make sure that's validated appropriately, right? And to make sure we're always getting documents signed, the right signatures are in the right place. And once that's built, there's really no need to, to preview that beforehand, right? And what you can do as part of your workflow is to say, okay, we're gonna get a document signed and it's gonna send it to you before you complete the process and do the approval. Like the other another person asked is, can I sign it before I approve it or have it signed and then I approve it? You can have the template process, you have approved it. And if you realize that it's not been signed the right way, then you just, you know, you click a button that says don't approve and may we have that initiate and start the process all over again or, or what have you. So there's things that we can do, but I think the goal would be to remove steps, not add steps. And I think that's something maybe best just, you know, talk through offline um, with your reseller or, or whomever your document contact is. And we can show you how that will work in, in a, a maybe a proof of concept. Yeah, definitely. So if we don't get to your question today. We have a few more questions. Um, you know, definitely reach out to your authorized document partner or your document representative. Um, let's see. Next question. Uh, what if we currently work in document but do not have DocuSign? 
How do we yes. sign up for DocuSign? Yeah, so great question. So DocuSign is, um, you know, it's easy to get signed up for them. They've actually got a bunch of basic packages. The nice thing is, is if you're already using Docker in the cloud, you already have all the technology you need in order to leverage um, DocuSign with Docker. Now there are, you know, you, if you're not already familiar with how to configure things, then you may need some help from your whoever your uh, your Docker contact is. And our professional service department is very, very adept at configuring workflows for electronic signatures. So to get signed up with DocuSign, you just contact DocuSign or your Docker reseller, but you can literally go to DocuSign.com and get signed up. Valid ID is the same way. We also have, because of our partnership with Valid ID, we can also sell those uh, signatures to you as part of the process as well, in case anybody has that question as a follow-up. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy to get set up. As long as you have access to that service, we can get you set up with Docker. Got it. It looks like um, a couple of people are asking about, um, can you set up reminders, uh, you know, in case someone hasn't signed something by a certain date, like how do you remind them? Yeah, absolutely. So inside of the Docker workflow engine, you can actually set reminders and escalations. So similar to, to a approval process you would have internally, if you're needing to get this either signed internally or externally, you can have the system look for events. So one of the events could be, signed document so if it hasn't been signed and you can have it checked daily hourly however if it hasn't been signed you can have notifications sent right it could be very simple saying hey by the way you still need to sign this document right and that can be sent internally it can be sent externally however you want to deal with that but yes you can have reminders and escalations sent just like you would with any docker workflow all right yeah it looks like um we're close to end we can wrap it up uh, one last question someone was wondering um, are you able to add a blank text field for the signer to enter their own text, like I guess answering a question um, on top of, I guess, applying their signature? So it depends on the format of what you're wanting them to sign. So if I send them a form to get signed, I can have them put in additional fields. Um, if I'm sending them another document where I just need a signature, then that depends on the solution, right? So um, Validate ID doesn't really have the ability to put in additional information. With DocuSign, you can actually put in a text field um, if you uh, if you want to have that available in the document. You just have to specify where that is. Uh, but you can also do some of that inside of the workflows with DocuWare as well. So I think if you look at you know combining the technology between DocuWare and the signature signature service providers, there's a way to get that done. But once again, it'd be let's have an offline conversation. Let's talk through the use case behind that. I'm sure there's a way there usually is. And we'll see if we can't get something working for you. All right, great, thanks. Um, looks like we're just up on time. So um, thank you everyone for um, spending the last 45 minutes with us. Thank you, David, for going through the signatures and the demo. Thank you everyone for your great questions. So again, you know, let's continue the conversation on uh, electronic signatures. You know, we want to help you. We want to work with you on the processes that you need automated so you can, you know, keep work moving forward. So again, there's various ways to get in touch, whether it's um, e emailing us or contacting and working with your authorized Docker partner. So look out for the email from me, you know, later than tomorrow morning. And um, that should be it. So I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Take care and um, uh, feel free to uh, you know join us on our next webinar. We have one every month. So with that, thank you and take care. Thank you so much. Yep, take care, bye. bye.